Hello, I'm Chris Makin. I'm a chartered accountant and I specialise full time in forensic accountancy, in mediation and in expert determination. I'm often asked, what is a forensic accountant? How, how does that work? Well, the answer is that I do anything to do with accountancy and the law. I was a normal accountant for quite some years. I started with a tiny practice, two and a half staff, virtually no fee income, and act at four, several hundred really, tax return clients, market traders, small businesses, some very interesting growing family businesses, and I even audited a couple of public companies. That practice grew until I had staff of 18, um, and I then merged with a West Yorkshire practice. At that stage, although I was continuing to be the um, the senior partner in the Leeds office, I was doing little bits of legal work. Solicitors were asking me to work out net earnings for personal injury clients and things of that sort. In no time at all, I was acting in a case of a stuntman who was injured on a Superman film at L3 Studios. This was high profile. This was on Look North every evening. I didn't appear, but the case did, and it was interesting. I was given evidence for a full day at the Royal Courts of Justice in London, and I thought, this is fantastic. This is my future. So I tried to get a little bit more. I was then asked by elite solicitor to help in the defence of the chairman of a company called Barlow Clowes. This was a major international investment company which had collapsed with debts of about £150 million and was rife with fraud. The series fraud office were delivering van loads of evidence to us every week and I had to recruit a team of six assistants to mass produce an expert report going through all the transactions of money being moved around the world in lumps. My report ended up as 43 ring binders and I was expected to be at the Old Bailey giving evidence and helping barristers and so on for 18 months on very, very high cost legal aid, which is a career. I thought this is wonderful. The very day before the trial was due to start, the QC informed me that my report had been agreed by the Serious Fraud Office and I didn't need to appear. In the meantime, because of the eight months working full time on this case, all my clients had had to be taken over by other partners, so I had absolutely nothing to do. So what do you do? I thought, I must be a forensic accountant now. I'll to start telling people. And in no time at all, I built up a department of seven and I've been a full time forensic accountant for the last 20 years. And with Barlow Clouds, that was interesting. This was the big turning point in my career. I had to become a forensic accountant because I had nothing else to do. I'd given my practice away for, effectively. But our client was the chairman. The managing director, Peter Clouds, was not my client. And he got 10 years in jail and was disqualified as a director for 15 years, which is the maximum. Result for my client, not guilty on all charges. That was a result. And since those early years, when it was pure forensic accountancy, um, I qualified as a mediator. I was one of the first five in the country to qualify or to be accredited as an expert determiner by the Academy of Experts, where I'm now an examiner in expert determination. I'd been doing it for 20 years, but it became a formal qualification, and I was in the first batch to achieve that. And people seem to like the fact that I can offer various alternatives to solving their legal problems. What drives me? Why does the work keep piling in? Why do I keep doing it? One or two reasons. I suppose the most important is that I care. I love helping people. I can now offer a range of methods of solving legal problems. I'm a forensic accountant, an expert witness, I do mediation, I do expert determination. So that people can have a choice and I can use the expertise in one field in solving their problems uh, in other ways. Traditionally forensic accountants have seemed to be very expensive and that is an issue I had to address in the early days and the method I developed 
has continued and it's this I offer what's called an initial review without obligation in other words without obligation to instruct me if a solicitor or in fact a private individual uh, approaches me and says I've got a legal problem how much will you charge for doing a report the cheeky answer is how long's a piece of string the serious answer is I don't know but I'm prepared to tell you please send me the key documents the pleadings, the witness statements, other evidence and so on. I will go through that, I will type my own notes to get into my own head what the case is about, I'll share those notes with you and those notes will conclude with, as near as I can, an estimate or fixed fee. At that point there is no charge, so it costs nothing to find out if I can assist. If potential instructions are confirmed, that time, of course, has been built into the fee and it, it becomes chargeable. But it costs nothing for someone to find out if I'm the right man for the job, if I understand the issues, and if the fee I intend to charge provides a reasonable cost-benefit analysis to the outcome.